welcome to another interesting episode of your program of choice, Health Affair on AIT, a platform where we focus on public health issues, challenges of women and children, with a view to foreign lasting solutions. I am your regular anchor, Ushua Mowa Danis. On the program today, we'll be listening to some nutrition experts on food fortification, a public health intervention to green hunger and malnutrition in the country. But first is our new segment. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. By Thursday, 21st of September 2023, about 500 medical graduates and postgraduate doctors are expected to join the health sector workforce. Coming at a time when the nation's health sector is in their need of this replacement, given the worsening brain drain, Professor Akio Shibogu said nothing seems to be secured yet, except more measures are put in place to retain them. At this coming convocation, we will be uh, graduating, or I, I think about uh, 413 new fellows will be joining the, the pool. And in addition, 92, 92 doctor of medicine graduates will also be joining. So at this coming convocation, we'll have over 500 uh, uh, postgraduate doctors convoking on uh, Thursday. Let me also point out that the curriculum of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria is so robust that we included in that training the ability to add to the body of knowledge. So we're not just training them to be specialists, doctors and dentists, we're training them to also be able to add to the body of knowledge. The college is saving the country a lot of uh, resources by training specialists in country. In addition to the economic benefits, the specialists we produce in country are more contextually relevant uh, to the health problems of uh, Nigerians because we train them in country. But the main challenge we are facing now is that we are not having enough people to train because as doctors graduate now, the Jackpa syndrome is affecting them. So in order to address that problem, we need to train more and we need to retain more. So there are two legs to it. We need to ramp up our training uh, processes and we also need to put in place, largely on the side of government, to put in place mechanisms to ensure that uh, skilled manpower remain in the country. Of course, there are several ways by which government can do that. At our last conference at Ilori, we proffered some solutions as to how we can retain a trained manpower through financial and non-financial incentives. Oshibogu lamented that between 30 to 40,000 Nigerian doctors are currently practicing in different parts of the world, leaving over 200 million Nigerians with inadequate hands for their healthcare needs. Some of our sister countries in West Africa, even in West Africa, are already poaching on our medical manpower because they are offering IRP to these doctors. I have not mentioned the 11,000 doctors who are in the UK and the 12,000 doctors who are in the United States. So you can, and then you go on to Canada, then you go on to uh, Australia, then you go on to Saudi Arabia. The National Postgraduate Medical College was established by Decree Number 67 of 24th September 1979 was a responsibility of producing medical manpower for the country. Over the years, the college has produced not less than 8,500 specialists, but most of the trained hands have migrated for want of better working conditions. 14 new fellows were inducted into the Nigeria Academy of Pharmacy on the 7th of September, 2023. Among them are pharmacist Ulubenga Adebayo Falabi, the current National Secretary of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, PSN. Pharmacist Iola Bolagade, the immediate past chairman of PSN, Lagos State Branch, and Pharmacist Olufun Kelawal, founder of Victory Drugs. With the admission of the new fellows into the academy, the country will no doubt be better for it, as it will translate into improved healthcare for the masses. On the conference theme, 
the Nigerian economy and the future of the former school ecosystem. Experts explored various ways that players in the sector can take advantage of the inherent challenges to grow the industry. The aim is for us to now take even more seriously the issue of uh, uh, medicine scarcity, right? And <laughs> it's so easy to analyze. Uh, during COVID, we saw how, n how naked African countries were in the area of medicine availability unless and until we start making medicines locally here, given a conducive uh, uh, industry uh, environment. Unless we, con we start that, we would not be able to do it. I was giving an example of Mr. Yu Yu, a Chinese person who made a research into artemisin, which has been used to uh, address the uh, issue of malaria, uh, especially now that chloroquine seems to be in the back burner. Uh, and because he did that work in artemisin, and it was so useful for malaria, uh, he had a Nobel Prize. We have very many brilliant people in the pharma world here in Nigeria who were there to prioritize and be assisted to take to a conclusion their research in the local hubs. Many of them are here. We have very many Nobel Prize winners uh, in the pipeline. There's a lot of healthcare reform by the present administration to be able to unlock the potentials of the private sector, to reduce our importation and dependence on imported drugs, to go from 70% of importation of drugs to at least 60% of it, you know. And to be able to do this, we need to create the enabling environment, we need to have physical and non-physical policies, and I think we're being able to, you know, this is being created. But the challenge is, that are we in the pharmaceutical industry poised to take advantage and to benefit from this? Now, there's also a driving force on the continent called the African Free Trade um, Agreement, where we will have a co complete uh, free trade zone of Africa. So we as Nigerians should not just be thinking about just self-sufficiency as a nation, but how do we become a net exporter of pharmaceuticals and, and medical uh, consumables, you know, for to the rest of uh, Africa. You see that uh, there are lots of opportunities and uh, this is what we wanted to talk about at the Academy of Pharmacy. We have a responsibility to have more APIs, active pharmaceutical ingredients developed in country. We have a lot of traditional medicine that could be turned into an opportunity Opportunity. We have a scarcity of human resources, but again, we can leverage on technology to close that gap. We have enabling policies by government right now that can reverse the negative trends. So there is, you know, nice and good positive headwinds, but we need to be able to poise ourselves to take uh, advantage of these opportunities. Uh, I also mentioned the importance of the role in which pharmacists and all of us in the healthcare chain uh, play in terms of vaccination. Uh, government has just introduced a new cervical cancer vaccine and as you know during COVID pharmacists and pharmacies were administering uh, COVID vaccination so it, there may be a role for you know to have easy uh, dissemination to include the role of pharmacists in the administration of the vaccine. Most of the time Nigerians see problems, difficulties or some people will transform into challenges. I rather see opportunities. It may sound strange, but I, I remember not too long ago when I returned back from uh, after my PhD in Germany. I, I had a job in Chicago, but I didn't accept it. I came back home, and I don't think I regret doing that. I think we should harness these opportunities and, and see how we can also advise government to uh, have a level playing ground in necessary infrastructures to enable people. Uh, when people practice, they will be able to help the economy. I believe the landscape for uh, the pharmaceutical in, uh, uh, the pharmaceutical ecosystem, like you put it, is huge and we should tap into these opportunities. We have to take our destiny in our hands, first of all. We have to admit that we have all it takes to make a great nation and we are endowed, greatly endowed. So we need all hands on deck. So we need to see beyond the challenges that we face. We need to look out for the opportunities and make the most of them. We need to do more than talk. We need to act. The Nigeria Academy of Pharmacy was founded in 2014 to contribute to efforts that enable Nigerians optimize the benefits and values derivable from pharmacy and healthcare services to ensure good health. Going by the World Health Organization, WHO recommendation, that is meant to be one nurse to five patients. 
But the reality on ground in Nigeria, according to available statistics, is that there is only one nurse to over 1,000 patients amidst the teeming population of over 200 million Nigerians. With the theme of the 2023 Nurses Week celebration, our nurses, our future speakers here believe that nurses can do better if they are given the desired attention. If we invest in the nurses, the future is brighter because without the nurses, there is no health sector. It will be to my joy if truly nurses are given better placements. And uh, this includes improve facilities which are required for best practices. Many of the equipment we are using are obsolete and there's a need for them to be re, uh, replaced even with modern ones. Another aspect has to be that there's a need for their wages to be improved. If their wages are good, they won't have any cost to want to live elsewhere. Though they are trying, but more needs to be done because the few ones left, we don't want to lose them. The week-long celebration that started on the 27th of August to 1st of September 2023 featured a lot of activities like nurses' work, beauty pageant, Ankara Day, and lots more. It's a fantastic one, very interesting. It's a beauty pageant. There are so many of us that are in this contest. It's just a testimony to the fact that nurses are beautiful. Nurses Week is celebrated annually to recognize and celebrate the important role of nurses and midwives in patients' care. After a series of activities that characterized the 2023 Nurses Week celebration, this conference was a way to appreciate the Lagos State Government for some of their demands that have been met and to look at areas for further improvement. The speakers, while discussing on the theme, our nurses, our future, expressed concerns about the number of nurses still living the continent, especially in Nigeria, for greener pastures. We train nurses from the taxpayers of our own, and then other countries, they come to, 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 to take them. The message is that the government should deal between them, themselves and the those government or those countries that are in need of nurses, they should in return invest in training them in Africa. You can't provide quite of care without developing nursing. You can't achieve universal health coverage or SDGs without investing in nursing. In abroad, you have a nurse taking care of uh, four patients. In Nigeria, you can see a nurse taking care of about 30 patients. There is no way they can give the best care to the patient when they have we, you know, every workload. So we appreciate Mr. Governor, Governor Sawolu, he's trying his best and uh, we are still encouraging him to do more. The government should, 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 should institute a training fund for nurses. If adequate training is provided, if nurses are well remunerated, now we will not, be, we will not have any chance to be traveling abroad. Quackery in the health sector and particularly in the nursing profession, was another issue for the speakers to worry about. And we're also calling on government to wage war against the private hospitals that think they can turn their hospital to a training institution to be producing nurses. Nurses are not produced that way. And that is why the mortality rate in the state is still very, very high. The nurses also add a message for the new health minister to make justice and equity his guiding principles as he steers the affairs of the sector in the next few years. Welcome back. Nigeria, according to health experts, loses an estimated 1.5 billion naira in gross domestic product due to diminishing productivity and increased healthcare costs arising from malnutrition. To bridge this gap, experts are clamoring for total compliance to the food fortification policy adopted in Nigeria since 2003. A healthy population, people often say, builds a prosperous nation, but many Nigerians are threatened on a daily basis and die needlessly due to diseases, poor health care, malnutrition and lack of access to relevant information. The sorry state of our health infrastructure has also been a major challenge. On Health Affair, Oshomwa Daniels 
brings these challenges to the attention of relevant authorities for a lasting solution. For sponsorship on advert placements, please call the numbers showing on your screen. Health Affair, your access to good health through quality information. Consequences of, you know, uh, lack of uh, put compliance, we are seeing it, you know, clearly. And very important, the issue of nutrition must be taken very seriously in this country. If we want to healthy people, if we want to productivity, if we, do, if we want the country to earn more income, right now we are in a huge crisis because the country income is declining and the consumption and the demand is increasing. That is why today the dollar is almost 1,000 uh, naira to a dollar and it will even go more because the only factor that makes the dollar to come down is your ability to be productive, to produce more and sell out and make the dollar. If you don't make the dollar, if you are not productive, there's no way these challenges will you know, um, overcome. A good percentage of the workers did not eat healthy within this time of reasons such as availability and affordability. This has a significant impact on productivity as malnutrition workers are more likely to be sick, tired and industrial accident and be absent from work thereby leading to loss of hours and productivity. It is important that Nigerians we take issue of um, nutrition very serious because if the society, if the workers are not healthy, they cannot be productive. And if what we consume is simply, you know, um, diseases, then it will also make us sick and we will not be able to uh, be productive and be able to uh, help in terms of generating, you know, even income for the nation. So it is important that given the fact that, and given the figures that have been just read out, it is, it is important that we take necessary steps to save the future of our young people in this country. If our mothers are not properly you know, uh, eating well, and the children, they themselves too, are not given the necessary adequate nutrient food that can help to make them to be not only you know, um, alive and healthy, but also brilliant. It is important that we take into consideration about these figures where Nigeria is actually ranked uh, in a very ridiculous ranking all over the world. We need to do everything possible to overcome the challenges that we are having uh, in this country. This fact has devastating impact on health, productivity and economic development. Nigeria loses an estimated 1.5 billion in gross domestic products annually due to uh, diminished productivity and increased health care costs caused by malnutrition. This is a very serious um, concern that every Nigerian that really you know, cares about the health of this country and its people should actually begin to do something to address these fundamental problems. The COVID-19 pandemic, complete in Ukraine, and severe climate events have also raised costs of nutrition uh, food, making more people uh, vulnerable to malnutrition. Fortifying you know, uh, staple foods with essential vitamins and minerals is also one of the most effective ways of improving uh, Nigerian's population nutrition status. Food fortification is the process of adding essential vitamins and minerals to food vehicles to improve their nutri uh, nutritional content. This is an important public health intervention that can help to prevent malnutrition, which is a major problem in many countries, including Nigeria. A recognition of this important process, government of Nigeria has taken key steps to ensure that certain food vehicles are fortified. The government of Nigeria developed regulation and mandatory food fortification policies in 2009 and 2019 respectively to promote food fortification which is being implemented by three key agencies present here today. Uh, we have NABDAC, we have uh, FCCPC, and we have SON. We need to work together to ensure that 
all mandatory food vehicles, local and imported, sold in Nigeria are fortified with essential vitamins and minerals. We need to raise awareness on the importance of food fortification as a way to generate demand for fortified food products. Many people are not aware of the benefit of food fortification and this is a major barrier to compliance. As such, there is a need to educate the public about the importance of food fortification and the need to buy fortified food as means to improve nutrition status of Nigerians, especially with respect to macronutrient deficiencies. Fortification of food um, happens in a number of different ways. Uh, this morning we are talking about large-scale food fortification, which is the addition of um, micronutrients, so minerals and vitamins, to commonly consumed staples like corn, maize, wheat flour, salt, sugar, edible oils. And part of the reason for this is because when these foods are processed, some of those micronutrients that are there naturally are lost. And for the population to be able to have access to these really important um, nu uh, nutrients, we, we had them back in through the industrial fortification process. It is extremely important. Micronutrients play a very key role in, in assuring and ensuring our health and um, improves the quality of the food that we eat when, when, if they, uh, they, the, the adequate amounts of these nutrients. Um, things like iodine in salt or vitamin A, um, a number of B vitamins, um, iron, zinc, some of these uh, nutrients are the ones that are added industrially, which is why we call it um, fortified foods. Um, the process of actually doing this is actually very cost effective and it has been proven across the world to be one of the most cost effective um, health interventions that um, any country can invest in to make uh, the food system deliver um, adequate nutrients to the population. It is, um, it is scalable, so it means that it's easy to actually put in place and replicate. And when the process is working well, uh, the, the good thing about it is people don't even need to know because these are things they commonly consume. And if all of the products, products on the market are adequately fortified, those nutrients are just delivered directly uh, to Nigerian people. So this is a really important intervention. Um, and um, in Nigeria, we have been um, running the National Food Fortification Program for um, well over 20 years. So it's a, it's a mature program, but we're still seeing that the program is not delivering uh, these micronutrients in the amounts that people require. So when we do um, surveys of food in the market, or we actually go as far as actually surveying the population to see how much of these nutrients are in their blood systems, their bodies, we find extremely high levels of deficiencies, especially for things like vitamin A, um, for iron, for zinc in children under five, in adolescents, especially adolescent girls, but also in women of reproductive age. And these nutrients are critical uh, for the health of these populations. Um, and um, overall for the productivity of Nigerians. Um, you know, this is, um, the deficiencies we're talking about are not deficiencies that you can easily see. Uh, they don't always show in the way that people look, but it has an impact on their health. And that's why it's sometimes also called hidden hunger. Um, and um, many of us in the country are currently suffering from different forms of this hidden hunger. As a legislator, I think one of the most important things for the beginning point is strong legislation on food fortification. Uh, in the 10th Assembly, uh, and we want to say here that the whole, whole health committee in the uh, in, 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 in National Assembly work together. And with that, I believe that we'll achieve a lot of legislation concerning health and then all related matters. And that's why I'm political will will make sure that every legislation that is required in all aspects that has to do with nutrition is strongly looked into. And I'll also call on all of us seated here. Most times, uh, uh, um, Non-governmental organizations, 
many of them leave the issue of uh, 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 um, bills to legislators. Sometimes some of these things can also come uh, you know, from you to us and we'll sit down and look at it and formulate laws that will govern the nation very well. And of course that will make your job very easy. Apart from legislation, after the legislation, we also need to look at the issue of uh, compliance and then monitoring, which I believe these are some of the key responsibilities of organizations here like the Ministry of Health, NAFDA, the SOM. They are also very key. No matter the legislation, if there is no compliance, if there is no uh, monitoring, if there is no implementation, nothing will work. So you are also very, very key in ensuring that uh, food uh, fortification is actually taken seriously in the country. We're talking about fortification or, 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 uh, or, or food or rich food for people to eat good nutrition. People are even struggling to eat food, whatever they can find. So it becomes a very, very big problem for the country. We are talking about the workforce. The workforce that the, the workforce that are actually going to do the farming are not even having food to eat, not to talk of going to their farms. So if they don't eat, they only have, don't have the strength to go to farms. And then of course, if they even try going to farms, they are killed. So it's a big problem we are facing right now. When there is strong nutrition, the disease burden of the community or the this thing will, will, will certainly go down. So if people feed well, they will not be sick. And if people are not sick, they will not go to hospital. This I will wrap it up this week. Thanks for spending your time with us. Please, let's do it again same time next week. And do endeavor to advertise your products and services on the program. I remain yours truly, Ushuo Mowa Daniels.